Hello friends, this is Scott back at the Project Garden and in the week since I was over here last, we had a freeze. It's pretty evident, as you see here, the tomatoes are totally dead. Uh, the homeowner has been mowing and mulching leaves and he's dumping them in the garden for me. So that's nice that we have a little bit of cover. I'm gonna get manures and, and other bags of leaves and bring them in and make sure that I uh, you know cover the dirt. Uh, the earth likes to be covered and we wanna make sure that we uh, as, as going into our second year garden, we want to get the soil life enhanced. We want uh, really a living system going in this garden. And it's amazing how much life is in this soil uh, from when we started to now. Lots of earthworms, lots of uh, you know, regular insect and, and, and bug activity. And the soil is very loose and crumbly. So we've done a good job. Now here there's some leaks, uh, with, along with some weeds it looks like there. But uh, the leaks are still there. Uh, again, we see dead tomatoes everywhere. There's strawberries, and then as you look over the brassicas, I'll give a better inventory at the end of this video of what's left after I do a little bit of harvesting today. But all this is chicken food in here as well as some people food. So I'm here for a couple different purposes. I'm here for compost materials. I'm here for chicken feed and bedding. I'm here for human food. And I'm here for some other food to feed to the chickens too. That's the spent tops of the, of the produce, like the carrots that we're going to pick today. But as we scan over here, there's a little bit of potatoes left. And then scanning back around, the garden is starting to come to an end, but there's still stuff there. So here I am just going in and, and uh, tearing out the tomatoes. Now these cages are the, the real cheapo cages that the homeowner had here. They're the tiny, tiny ones. And you know, with the small cages, I didn't have any incentive to really go too crazy uh, with pruning or, or I just let them do what they wanted. Uh, we produce a lot of tomatoes, but part of the problem with that is they did sprawl all over the ground. And as you see along these rocks, it's great homes for snails and slugs. So we had a lot of damage on the ripe tomatoes, but we still had a ton. We still had plenty, but we could have had a lot more if I wouldn't have uh, planted them right up against uh, great hiding places for, uh, for those types of bugs. Next year, I'm, I'm going to definitely plant the tomatoes just in a regular row. And then I'm also going to bring my uh, heavy-duty tomato cages over here, I believe. I've had them at my house and my yard with, with gets a lot of shade, and, or I end up having to rotate the crops around. And, and uh, like this year, my tomatoes ended up in a spot that wasn't very good for them. And so I got some, but not nearly uh, what I usually get. So I think this will be my tomato growing area, and I think I'll harvest more uh, or plant more squashes and bigger viney stuff at my house uh, that can take over some space. And uh, just use this for more of the, uh, the other types of crops that it produce a lot for the freezer or for, the, for tomato sauce and things like that. Again, I'm just in here ripping everything out. Very loose soil, uh, very easy to clean up. The cages came right out. Uh, I'm happy with the condition of the soil. The soil is very loose and crumbly and moist. And uh, it'll just continue to get better as I keep adding organic matter to it. Also had some peppers uh, planted at the base of the tomatoes that also obviously died with the, with the first frost. So we're just going to rip all this stuff out and then sort it out, get the cages out of the material, and then get it to the compost bin and get the cages stored for, for maybe next year. I'll just have them throw them away. Uh, it's, they're his, they're the homeowner's, so I'm not going to throw them. I'm just going to stack them and store them. Here I am pulling some corn. Uh, the corn has some ears left on, some of it, but most of it is going to be for the chicken yard. Um, I was watching Edible Acres, another YouTube channel, and uh, he uses red worms. So there's a cucumber. But anyway, he uses red worms in his chicken compost system, and the only way the chickens don't eat them all is that he puts rocks and stumps and, and debris you know, in the chicken yard so that the worms have a place that they can escape and, uh, and reproduce. So it's always nice to layer the, you know, the garden with, with, with material that the chickens just can't move all of it around. They'll have to leave some or can't get under everything, and then the worms will have a place to hide, and hopefully we'll have a better supply of worms. Here, a pretty good root structure on the corn. It wasn't, I've seen better, but uh, again, I'm pulling these out very easy. Uh, corn's usually a little harder to pull out than this, but this, this soil is, uh, I put a lot of layers of, of compost and manures, and, and uh, it's all turned into pretty good soil. Next up, it's time to pick the last of the potatoes. I've been picking potatoes for the last month or so. A uh, few here, a few there, a uh, few bigger uh, harvests. Got quite a few potatoes. We've been enjoying them. I just had some mashed potatoes uh, for the third day in a row with some leftovers. We just cooked a couple of the monster ones and it, it lasted for days. Uh, plenty of leftovers, uh, but very, very crumbly, very 
buttery potatoes. They're they're very tasty. But again, I planted lots of different varieties in here, probably eight different varieties. And so I'm just going through here. I don't have the best tool. I don't have a, a fork digging here, uh, but I'm just trying to start at the edges and work my way into the middle to try not to damage or cut up any potatoes. And then I'm just kind of uh, going through the dirt to make sure that uh, that I try to get as many as I can, not leave anything behind. And at the end, you'll see me, I'll be raking the, the bed to pick up any loose ones that I might have missed. But I did a pretty good job harvesting. But there's all different sizes in here. There's little ones, medium-sized ones, and then as you'll see here in a little bit, there's some bigger ones. But they're tasty. They're all, again, all different varieties and, and shapes and sizes. And we'll eat the smaller ones first because they don't store as long. And then we'll save the bigger ones for either a bigger dinner with more people or we'll, uh, we'll, they'll store longer. So we'll just save them for later. I've ever watched documentaries on potatoes, you know, especially for like French fries. Uh, what depends on is the amount of starch and moisture content in the potatoes. So some potatoes aren't as good for certain applications at home as others. But what I've really noticed is it doesn't really matter is I just make my own little cubed potatoes with eggs, my farm fresh eggs. I just cut them up small, fry them up in some olive oil, and then I get them crispy, and then I uh, have a nice little addition. I feel like I'm at JB's or Denny's. Uh, the breakfast looks pretty similar and tastes pretty similar. So, uh, also like to do is you know use my small onions and any peppers uh, or other types of vegetables that I have that I can mix in with the the quote cube potatoes or hash browns and uh, just adds a little special extra taste to them and uh, especially green pepper I like to put a little green pepper in there and uh, that definitely reminds me of of buying a skillet from one of the, the major breakfast uh, restaurants. Again I'm being very ginger uh, coming in from the edges just to make sure I'm not cutting up potatoes uh, I'm looking for some bigger ones but I'm just finding some of the smaller ones that I've uh, I've already dug through when I harvested the bigger ones but I'm about ready to find some bigger potatoes, I think, if I, my memory serves me correct in, in you know, previewing this part of the video. I think I'm in the russet section. Uh, if I was at the grocery store, I'd be in the russet section. And yep, here's an interesting collection, uh, kind of all combined together. I'm fairly new to vlogging and, and uh, photographing myself doing all these yard tasks. I've decided to do some... Uh, some time lapse and uh, see how that goes and it, man, it was kind of interesting slowing things down again i'm back in and finding the red potatoes it looks like i'm in the red de potato department and these are some nice ones uh, good size so i'm in the last couple feet of the end of the tomato potato row you know, i keep saying tomato it's potato row and i'm just gonna harvest the rest of these really quick and uh and it looks like i fill up this bucket pretty pretty good all the way to the top and then I come back for some more here in a minute so it's got about a bucket and maybe a bucket and a quarter I think is what I got today but but I'll show that here in a, in a few minutes but uh, it's always a surprise when I'm digging in because I did mix the potato varieties up so I could either be finding white potatoes red potatoes russets purple potatoes uh, never know what, what we're going to find here but again I'm getting down to the end I've had a lot of potatoes this year already um making sure as I get as many as I can so I don't want any volunteers. Uh, there's another nice red one and uh, looks like a friend. But we're getting down to the, the very end of the crop and I think I'm going to find something very interesting here. Uh, let's see, oh, another red one. But I think there's something else coming up here if I remember from my, the preview in the video before I narrated it that, that uh, I find something that looks kind of cool. Now, I do narrate most of my videos because this project garden is in a very noisy location. There's a major road right behind it, and it's, uh, it's just easier to narrate because I just don't want to hear all the traffic noise in, my, in the background of the videos. I don't think it sounds very, very professional, but you know, having a little noise once in a while is okay, but it gets annoying when I'm editing these videos to hear all this background noise. Now, I'm still anticipating finding something kind of cool but it takes me a, a few more spades here to, to find them. But there's an interesting variety. Uh, it's called Viking. It's a purple potato. And uh, it's funny because it's purple on the outside and the inside. And if you mix it with your, you know, make mashed potatoes out of it, you're eating purple potatoes or bluish potatoes. So it's kind of a freaks people out a little bit. Here we go. I found some. And these are, uh, these are some of those. And they're nice size. They're not huge, but they'll, uh, they'll, they're definitely, you know, they taste like a potato, but they definitely look differently. And they, they'll change the whole visual uh, 
appeal of your food, and some people, you know, don't like that. But uh, a little different color of my potatoes doesn't bother me as long as there's butter on them and a little bit of salt. Here's the first bucket, nice and full of very nice potatoes, all different sizes and some good ones in there. And there's still just a little bit left that I need to dump the bucket and come back and get some more. And after digging through it, I found this many more. So that's the end of the harvest for this year's potatoes. And if you look, I threw them in the back of the truck and there's a pretty nice little pile of potatoes there. As you also see, I grabbed some greens for the chickens. And uh, again, I'm looking for uh, food for the animals and for us here today at the garden. And here we're at the last step. I'm raking out the bed and the purpose is to find any potatoes that I missed. I don't want a bunch of volunteers coming up in this, in this area. And I'm also getting the bed, you know, semi ready for the garlic. I'm going to, I'm way late planting the garlic over here. I've already planted it and it's sprouting at my home garden in the raised bed. But I haven't had a chance yet to get over here and plant the garlic. Uh, you know, I'm going to plant a lot of garlic in this, uh, in this bed. So I've got some uh, amendments, some, some uh, bone meal and potash and, and uh, miscellaneous blood meal, I guess, uh, to add to this bed too. But I'm going to plant probably, oh, I'll break up maybe 15 heads of garlic and uh, that'll be maybe 150, 180 uh, little bulbs to plant, which is plenty of, of garlic. Now, here is the carrots. They're smaller. Uh, I've picked a lot of the bigger carrots already. Uh, every spade full could be big or could be small based on the, the lack of thinning or the soil is still being developed. So, you know, some soil did better than others. It was more fertile. But I'm just going to grab as, as many as I can uh, harvest and then process today because uh, carrots don't last long if you don't, you know, get them in a, in a moist, you know, cool place like a refrigerator. So I'm just going to take what I can get home and, and skin them and, and process them and get them in the freezer. So I'll be back for more. And uh, they're not going anywhere. They'll be fine in the soil for several weeks now. Uh, a light frost that killed everything else is not going to do anything to the uh, carrots. So, so again, they're smaller, but they're still very sweet. As soon as the temperature starts to drop, it seems like it sweetens the root crops a little bit if they're, if they're not too old. And I've... Uh, Tasted a few of these today, and they are they're definitely sweet and they're they're tasty, but they're a little bit of work. Uh, some people don't like to to harvest small vegetables because they they do create more work. But if you ever go to a fine restaurant and you're getting you know baby carrots or baby other vegetables, those are the most tender, and and that's what they're charging the big money for. So, so here's a close up look at to what I'm the size of the of the carrots that I'm harvesting today. There's you know there's a couple okay ones, but they're small, but they're they're tasty. And I'm just grabbing a few, again, just to, just to get the freezer filled up for this winter, and then I'll be back to get more and more. But again, I want to get them all processed the same day I pick them uh, so that I don't have any go to waste. Now, to recap what's left in the garden after the first frost, we have leeks, which are a cold-weather vegetable, and they can stay in the ground. There's Nothing's going to affect them. They'll be fine, but they're still growing. They're not huge, but they're, did, they're doing okay. Again, all these uh, brassicas and cauliflowers, I'm saving them just to pick them for the chickens. The chickens love them. Uh, we have tons of Swiss chard. There's strawberries. I've got to go through and weed the strawberries, making sure that we uh, you know, get that all ready. They don't like a lot of competition. Tons of Swiss chard that we've got to get harvested, but nothing in the, you know, the homeowner doesn't like it, and I haven't been taking much home other than to feed the chickens. Here's some turnips that are still in the ground. They're getting kind of insect eaten but there's still some big ones in here that I've got to harvest. And a little bit more carrots up in this section. So we have a couple of different parts of the row that are still there that will have some different size carrots that we're gonna, we're gonna harvest. So uh, again, that's the smaller ones that I was harvesting today and uh, there's still a lot there. So uh, we'll, we'll have a lot to, to eat still. But just taking a look back at the potato bed, it's all picked now and, and that's where the garlic will go. And I'm looking back around and we do still have life in the garden. There's still food to be eaten and there's still chicken food and there's still some compost material. And got to bring in a lot of leaves and manures, things like that. Now here's what I took home today. Again, there's compost material, there's chicken bedding, there's, there's greens for the chickens and there's potatoes and carrots for us and carrot tops for the chickens. So it's been a good day, good harvest. Here's a closer look at the potatoes I harvested today. Uh, two harvest baskets full. So we had a pretty good end of the year harvest, so we're happy. Get these cleaned up a little bit, not too much. I like to leave a little dirt on them, but just let them season for a few days. 
to dry out so there's no moisture on the outside and then I'll put them in my pantry and uh, and store them for for later use so good year much better than I did at my home garden in those uh, plastic containers uh, this year that was a failure but this was a pretty good success for a first year garden in ground potatoes different microclimates in the same Salt Lake Valley are interesting because I'm still getting tomatoes and beans so here's where I'm planting the garlic. This is the next project, which will be the next uh, video probably, is uh, planting in-ground garlic at the project garden. So I've got to mend the soil a little bit more, rake it out a little bit more, uh, make sure I got all the spuds out of there. But uh, this will be a great place for the garlic, and then I'll get it mulched in with leaves, and uh, we'll have a nicer garlic harvest next spring. or But they're probably early June is when we're going to get it. Thanks for watching this video, and give me a subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thank you.